Hi Chrissy. Now as you can see, Tina is sleeping in her favourite spot on the windowsill and Brandy's of course joining me on my lap. Now we introduced Tina about a year ago and it's been an absolute pleasure to have her around the house and even Brandy really likes having the company. We do leave the radio on for both of them but somehow they always seem to end up napping in the same room. Now they're not best of friends but they do tolerate each other, they leave each other alone and they do sometimes gang up on my husband and I for treats. But it is difficult to introduce a new pet so we returned to Mind My Pet and the Dog's Den in order to see what advice they had to give. Hello, today we're going to talk about introducing a second dog to your home. We're going to focus particularly on rescue dogs, um, but much of this will also apply if you like a new puppy. We're assuming, of course, that your existing dog has been trained to a basic level and uh, has learnt about boundaries within the household and, of course, outside of the household. If there are any issues surrounding separation, anxiety, aggression or lead reactivity, we'd suggest that these need to be addressed before introducing a second dog to your home. Ben, happy and relaxed as you can see, likes his walks and loves the house. Um, he's calm. The most important element whilst choosing uh, another dog was the temperament of the other dog in comparison to his. Our first top tip to introduce a new dog into your home where you already have a dog is to make sure that you're choosing one that complements your current dog. So in terms of temperament, age, size even, um, if we'd have brought home a, a Labrador or something a lot bigger than Ben, he wouldn't have been very happy about that. He would have felt quite threatened because that's just because of the type of dog that he is. When we chose Tammy, she was smaller than him. That wasn't the only consideration. It, I think it helped as well that Tammy's female, that we weren't bringing another male dog into the house, even though he's been neutered. Sometimes two male dogs together can be a, a problem. And her temperament as well. She was very timid when we first met her. She'd just come out of a puppy farm. And so he didn't feel threatened at all. He wasn't submissive towards her, but he also wasn't dominant. And you just get a sense of these things. Um, if he'd have had his ears back or um, been growling or sort of fixating on him where, where dogs stare and don't move a muscle, that's subtle behaviours to show that there's aggression there. There was none of that. And um, we just continued to monitor, went on a walk with them both, and uh, they got on like a house on fire. Also something to consider is not necessarily age, but it's a factor, definitely. If you've got an older dog that just likes to spend um, his or her day sleeping and isn't very active, um, and then you're introducing um, a very jumpy, playful, kind of inquisitive, mischievous dog into the household, then that also might upset the balance and um, might make your, your older dog unhappy. So that's not always the case. Sometimes it is a case of just seeing how they how they get on. But all of these things are, are factors to take into consideration. Top tip number two is uh, introducing the new dog to your home. The initial meeting between the dogs should really be on neutral ground, on their leads with separate handlers. Make sure the body language is positive, i.e. they're not cowering away from each other, and take them on a walk just to see how they get on. There's no pressure on the dogs then. If there's any unwanted aggression or overexcitement, um, correct this, but allow them to sniff. That's a natural thing for them to do. And repeat as necessary until they're calm enough to continue walking. Monitor both dogs throughout the walk. Um, if they ignore each other and, or want to play, that's fine. As long as there's no, no overt aggression. Once they're back in their respective homes, it's always a good idea to see if you can swap some item of um, blankets or toys that have got a scent of the other dog on there and give them to your dog. So in that way, both dogs can get each other uh, used to each other's smell. Sometimes, if you meet a new dog outside like that and you go for a walk, your existing dog will think that they found the new dog out and want to bring it home because oh, look what I found, I want to bring it back into the house. So that can work really well. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. Another good idea is to create separate spaces within the house initially. Um, that can be in rooms or different crates and time away from each other so that they're, they're not distracted and they can get a regular amount of sleep is also a good idea. 
top tip number three and this is just ongoing monitoring of your two dogs together so once you've um, chosen the correct dog and then brought them home and everything has gone swimmingly on the first 24 hours um, you need to keep up the monitoring um, and just you know your own dog after, after a year or more of having him or her then you'll know the behavior and, and the patterns of, of your own dog but you need to then it, it might change when there's a second dog introduced so they may become more boisterous or less or more dominant or, or less and that needs ongoing monitoring meal times should continue to be monitored at least for the first two three months yeah yeah um and like you said with these now eat together and they're absolutely fine they eat out of each other's bowls once they finish they swap over and make sure there's no food left some dogs you just you couldn't let that happen they would they would be too possessive monitor them when they're together all the time let them play encourage play as well um, but obviously be aware in case it goes slightly over the top never ever leave them alone initially so for the first two three months if you need to go out of the house then make sure that they're either in separate rooms or they're separated by being in separate crates or you've got a dog gate in between them um, just because they could turn there might be a bit of food left on the floor that you didn't know was there. And when you're out of the picture, that's when a fight could start or, or a toy. Also, when they're out on a walk together, um, check their, their body language towards each other and towards other dogs. Um, ben loved every single other dog out on a walk before we got Tammy. Once we got Tammy, they kind of, they bonded so well that actually they kind of formed a little pack and now we walk them separately because it's a lot easier. They can't gang up on other dogs if they're, if they're being walked uh, separately. Something else that's important is for there to be enough beds around the home so that they don't um, show possessiveness over their beds and there's plenty of room for them to go and lie down wherever they want to go and do that. Um, that's separate to having their dedicated sleeping area where you, you put them somewhere where they can sleep a couple of hours every day. Um, something that's really important as well is some kind of joint activity where the dogs are, are very, very equal. Um, like Simon's doing now, he's doing a little bit of training with them and rewarding them with their favorite treats. So this increases communication and also strengthens the pack as well. But something else that's really important is to spend time with the dog that you had in the household before the new one joined. So you're just dedicating some time with your existing dog so that that dog doesn't feel displaced or jealous in any way. In summary, we uh, followed all the tips that some we've just passed on to you and we've got two happy little dogs who have bonded exceptionally well together. They're always playing and uh, you can see how happy they are and they're very happy in each other's company, whether that's sleeping or, or playing or just mooching around. Um, deciding to get a second dog is a commitment, be aware of that. Um, you will need to put in more time, and obviously it costs more food and vet bills, etc. But if you put, prepare to put the work in and, and um, incur the expense, you will be rewarded um, doubly in terms of um, the joy that uh, both dogs will bring to your everyday uh, life. Hi, I'm Richard and my wife Nikki and I run Mind My Cat, a cat sitting service in Northampton. Today we're going to be talking about introducing a new pet into the home, so that be a dog into a house with cats or vice versa. The face to face introduction is a massive thing in any household. Try to choreograph this and make it happen when both animals are in a more relaxed state. So post feed or post nap is a good idea. Aim to have the dog on the lead as the dog, if not both, will want to investigate their new friend and the lead will allow you to have more control over the situation. It's also a really good idea to keep the two animals separate for two to three days if that's possible or if your home allows but if you do so, it's really important to let each animal know that there is another animal in the house. They'll be able to smell each other and they'll be able to hear each other. So try to move toys and blankets between rooms 
so they can start to familiarise themselves with their new housemate. Stroke each pet before going to stroke the other will enable that pet to smell their new friend on you and in time they'll start to adjust to their new surroundings. Cats may be defensive or even swipe at the dog in the early stages, so you may need to intervene. It's really important to stay calm and you may need to repeat the process several times over. So keep the initial meet short and repeat as the animals start to adjust to one another. Once you've made the decision to get a new pet, try and get as much information from the rehoming service as possible, their full history, so you know whether the dog or cat has lived in a home with other pets previously, as that will help. The mix of the house will also have an impact, as will the breed of the dog. So trying to introduce a puppy into a house with an old cat and young children could result in a real high energy situation. Similarly, introducing a basset hound to an old cat and a greyhound to a kitten will have very different experiences for both. On arrival home with the new pet, regardless of whether the cat or the dog is the new animal, try to keep the two separate and certainly ensure that the cat is not immediately exposed to the dog. Stair gates and dog crates could help in the early stages and give both animals space, certainly in the initial 48 hours while both animals start to adjust. A new home is a highly stressful experience for a cat and the added pressure of a dog may be too much all at once. Providing a safe space, especially for the cat, will help them both to adapt. Hi Welford. Welford would like to say hello. Certain breeds of dog and certain ages of dog may be inclined to chase kittens, which may put you in a, in a difficult or even an impossible situation. Trying to get as much information as possible will increase your chances of success and remove stress for all of you. It will take the animals, as well as the humans in the house, time to adjust to the new dynamic. So stay calm, stay patient, and you will reap the rewards as the animals settle in your home. Good luck from Mind My Cat. A new pet can be such a wonderful addition to the family. Good luck introducing yours.